a new car is always exciting and it's particularly so in the case of the Citroen C3 because this is the first mass market car by what is still a new manufacturer. Citroen started off operations in India only a few years ago and the Citroen C3 is going to be their volume driver. This has been designed, engineered and manufactured right here in India. Over 95% localization at the start of production. This has got two petrol engines, a naturally aspirated and a turbo petrol. This is the 1.2 turbo petrol which has got 109 bhp and a claimed 0 to 100 time of just 10 seconds. So this should be quick and the big talking point is that Citroen is not calling this an SUV. Now going by the styling, this of course looks like a compact SUV but Citroen are being refreshingly honest because let's face it, none of those compact SUVs are really SUVs. They are regular hatchbacks which have got raised ground clearance and a styled to look like an SUV. So Citroen, they are not targeting compact SUVs, but in fact, they are targeting the B segment hatchbacks with this car, SUV, call it what you will. Citroen is saying that this is targeted at B segment hatchbacks. What do you think? Let us know in the comments below and let's kick off this road test. start with the styling which has been clearly inspired by the Seek 5 Aircross SUV. Over on the nose you get the double chevrons which is the Citroen logo and it is integrated really well into the nose. You don't get full LED lights but you do get LED DRL running lights, fog lamps down there. Over on the profile that's where it's got this typical compact SUV styling cues so you get this big wheel arch claddings, 15 inch wheels. Now this is the top end version but these wheels are steel wheels. These are not alloys the hubcaps are made to look like alloys. You can get alloys, it's part of the over 70 accessories that you can slap onto the C3. But the standard car comes with steel wheels. On the accessories front, you can also get an orange roof. This is the black two-tone roof. You can get the funky orange roof, which gets orange wing mirror caps, more orange accents on the side, so make it look a little more funky. 180 mm ground clearance, so it is compact SUV territory and it'll take Indian roads like a breeze. The door handles, this full tap door handles you have a very visible keyhole which nowadays you don't see in too many cars uh, so that's that roof rails it can take a bit of weight and over on the rear again inspired by the c5 aircross suv so overall in terms of the styling this does look fresh it does look modern it's got that european flair a little bit of that french chic and it'll be inoffensive everybody will like it there is nothing really not to like you don't get a wiper for the rear screen, so that's there. You don't even get it on the accessories. But yeah, that's the styling. What do you think about it? Let us know in the comments. This is the PureTech 110. 110 stands for 110 PS, that's 109 bhp. That's what this 1.2 litre three cylinder turbo petrol engine makes. It's mated to a six speed manual transmission. The other engine, the 1.2 naturally aspirated, gets a five speed manual transmission. And like I said, there are no automatics, at least not at the launch. Now, this engine does give really good fuel efficiency 19.4 kmpl, which is good for a turbo petrol engine. The naturally aspirated gives 19.8 kmpl, which is even better. Overall weight of the car, 1035 kilos. So it is a light car. Now, over on the inside, and especially when you look through the engine bay, here you can see visible signs of cost cutting. For instance, if you look right down, you can see that there is no underbody shroud. Of course, you don't need a sump guard for cars like these. And I don't think it's going to get damaged when you drive it on Indian roads, even if it's a rough road. But this is going to throw up a lot of muck, especially during the monsoon. So this engine bay is going to get really messy when you drive through slush and muck, even when you're driving through the city during the monsoons. And another thing I must point out is the insulation and the covering on this bonnet. If you look at this, this is something that we haven't really seen before. It's uh, a bit too visible, all of this. The cabin of the C3, if you ask me, I think it is nicely styled, especially the dashboard. It's got this chunky SUV-ish kind of vibe going on here, which looks good. The quality also is pretty good. Of course, you won't get soft touch plastics at the expected price, but the fit finish, everything, it works well. The aircon vents, they move well. 
you don't really have any problems with it you don't get climate control you get normal aircon but this aircon it works really well i can attest to that fact you don't get vents for the rear passengers but this blower is actually pretty strong so the cabin cools very quickly the best part of the cabin is the 10 inch infotainment system it does work well it's responsive and it gets wireless carplay and android auto though it doesn't really have all those connectivity features that everybody else is talking about no wireless charging it has these guides for running your cable so that your cables are not dangling all over the place you get a usb charger here a 12 volt socket two usb chargers for the rear on the rear i will point out that the power window switches they are out here behind the handbrake it's not at the door so that's a bit of an irritant now the digital cockpit is not a digital cockpit it is a small digital display and it's been a really really long time since i did not find a tachometer in any car this does not have a tachometer i think that is a big miss you get controls for the volume on the right side of the steering wheel nothing on the left this is the blank no cruise control so there's no controls for it lots of storage spaces so lots of cubby holes so that space is there you don't get power mirror adjustment you have to do it by hand and if you have to do it on the other side well you got to reach out and because this is a biggish cabin it's got claimed best shoulder room in its class you really have to stretch out to operate the mirror on the other side and it does not auto close so when you get out put it in a tight parking spot you have to manually shut the mirrors also you don't have a day night mirror when was the last time you did not see a day night mirror in a car let us know in the comments below i cannot even remember so you have to manually move the mirror down in the night and yep yeah, that's the cabin of the Citroen C3 the seats one piece seats and it's comfortable i'll give you that so over long drives you'll be fine but the steering it only adjusts for rake not for reach though that said the driving position for me is actually well sorted and visibility is also good Citroen claim a best in class rear shoulder room but they are comparing it with B segment hatchbacks and of course compared to hatchback this is more spacious look at the amount of headroom that i have so overall this makes this quite a spacious cabin but if you compare it with compact SUVs the Nexon still has a little more space there is good knee room but it's not an over abundance of knee room it's just maybe an inch of spare knee room you can sit three abreast but i have to point out the central transmission tunnel is actually very prominent most manufacturers especially with these front wheel drive platforms are moving towards a flat floor whereas here it's got a very prominent tunnel so that does impede comfort for the middle passenger the middle passenger does not get a proper three point seat belt only a lap belt but if you sit three abreast the guy in the middle will be a little more comfortable because these seats from the sides they have got side bolstering so four people can sit comfortably but when you have a third person out here both the side guys are squeezed into the fellow in the middle so this guy would probably be a little more comfortable the seats they are actually comfortable in terms of the bolstering though i think the seat back angle should have been reclined a little bit more but it's all right the headrests integrated into the seats they're nice and soft the power window switches they are behind the handbrake they're not on the doors so ergonomically you need to stretch out to reach out to it no aircon vents for the guys at the back so overall this is a spacious cabin it's not the most spacious cabin in the compact suv class but compared to hatchbacks of course it is more spacious right then let's get going with the Citroen C3 this is the 1.2 turbo petrol makes 109 bhp 190 newton meters of torque and because the entire car is like just over a ton 1035 kilos it does give it an enthusiastic turn of speed it's a quick little car and in terms of refinement it's also a pretty silent car it is a three cylinder engine so at idle you do find those three cylinder vibes coming through that irregular idle but when you're cruising like i am right now it's pretty silent the engine the powertrain refinement is good hustle it like really rev the engine out and you can hear it but when you're just cruising just driving down the highway like we are right now 
it's a pretty silent engine the gearbox the six speed manual gearbox bit notchy in terms of the throws not very slick it's not like japanese gearboxes which shift smoothly like a hot knife through butter little effort is required though i have to say that the clutch weighting is fine it's not like your left foot is going to get tired but i'm surprised that there is no automatics right now at launch considering the popularity of automatics everybody wants an automatic also looking at the congestion in our cities automatic makes a lot of sense and the c3 does not get an automatic right now a surprising miss a quick swap into the 1.2 liter naturally aspirated variant this makes 81 bhp 115 newton meters of torque and well, let's face it if you want to get going in a hurry anywhere you really have to key in the engine and even then you're not going to make quick overtakes this engine really needs to be worked obviously the pricing of this variant will be very very competitive but if you're looking for something that's a little fun to drive don't come here if you're looking for something that will be very efficient yeah definitely a claimed 19.8 kilometers to the liter so extremely efficient weight just under a ton and this engine too only gets a manual and this is a 5 speed manual not even the 6 speed manual and of course like the other c3 that we just drove the ride comfort woof it's lovely this also has the second option for the interior trim this burnt orange trim so you can either choose from the black or this burnt orange which you know really pops up at you it does liven up the cabin make it look nice and fresh and it contrasts well with the orange wing mirror caps the orange roof all the orange accenting on the outside and even on this variant you get all the features so you get this 10 inch infotainment you get the 3.5 inch digital display all of that remains the same it's only the engine that is different otherwise everything else remains the same also no sunroof i don't think i mentioned it while driving the other car but none of the variants get a sunroof you really have to work this engine if you see the lights turning orange don't try to make a dash for it because i don't think you will make it but on the flip side the refinement is actually very good i don't know what revs i'm doing right now because obviously no tachometer but it does pull silently like the 6 speed manual this 5 speed gearbox also it's not the slickest shifting gearbox that you can find little notchy little bit rubbery works okay but not exceptionally and like i said 5 speeds no automatic why no automatic but the refinement is it's good it's a three cylinder engine but still very good refinement but this is evo india so i think we will swap back into the turbo petrol and go find a few corners to talk about the handling throwing it round bends well this car does have anti roll bars but it's got plenty of body roll it really leans on its outside tires on the outside front works it really hard the tires scream blue bloody murder it is not an enzo cutlet it's not a car that you would want to hustle through bends and the steering it's vague it's not precise this is not a car that has been engineered to fly through corners it likes things taken at a slightly sedate pace the grip is fine but it's only fine nothing exceptional about the dynamics about the car but the ride comfort is sorted this is actually very comfortable so all these ripples on the highway they're taken in really nicely it goes through it all very well and then when you find rumble strips like this 
goes through really nicely. The ride comfort is sorted. To go over these bumps and undulations, it goes through it really nicely. Also, the seats, the comfortable seats. I've been driving this more or less for the entire day now. And I have to say that the seat comfort is sorted. The driving position is also good, even though the steering does not adjust for reach, only for rake, but still, the driving position is good, the visibility is good, and you go over these, it's fine, takes it all very nicely. The C3 can get up to speed quickly, but you really have to play it by ear when to upshift, because the C3, it does not have a tachometer. Now, I don't remember the last time I drove a new car that did not have a tachometer. Also, this display, you can't call it a digital cockpit. It is a digital display and it is 3.5 inches. It's a small little display. Today, you have watches that are actually bigger than this. And it's all tons of digits. So, you have the speedo digits, then you have the shift up to second digit, then you have the odometer. Below that, you have the graphs for the fuel gauge and the temperature, all very cluttered out there. And that really lets the cabin down. That is the most visible and irritating sign of cost cutting. You have this lovely big infotainment and then you have that small little thing out there. That's not on, not on in this day and age. Everybody has moved on. I, the manual adjustment for the wing mirrors, that sort of I can get used to, but that, no, that's, that's tough. This is a pretty talky motor. There is a bit of turbo lag, but I can't tell you where the lag is because there is no taco, so wouldn't know. But that said, the motor pulls from really low down. So the grunt is there in this engine. You stick it into sixth cruising at 80 kilometers per hour, it's quite easy, it flows really nicely. And of course, this ride comfort, commendable. It's not as good as a Nexon, I have to be clear about that. But there's no float, no weave, it's nice and easy. They have focused on comfort and they have delivered on comfort. But then the downside obviously to this is that you find a corner, you chuck it into the corner. Whoa. Huge amounts of body roll. The C3, it gets only drum brakes on the rear. Discs obviously at the front. And it does not have ESP, only ABS. Step on the brakes. Does stop well. There's not too much fade when you drive it on the road. So the brakes overall work well, but no ESP. And two airbags. You don't have side airbags, at least not as of now. The Citroen C3 is a bit of a mixed bag. Now, in terms of the styling, it does look cool, distinctive, and you can personalize and accessorize it, make it look really funky. So I think on that front, it is job done. Then there is the comfort, which Citroen are really harping hard about. But it depends on what you are comparing the Citroen with. If you're comparing it with, say, compact SUVs, which is what it looks like, the Nexon, that sets the benchmark, and this does not best the benchmark. It is good, but it does not beat the benchmark. Obviously, when you compare it with B-second hatchbacks, then yeah, the ride comfort is better. 180mm ground clearance, you can go over all kinds of roads without a problem. So on that front, it is pretty much sorted. Good space inside, but there are visible signs of cost optimization. Ultimately though, it all depends on pricing. And if Citroen can undercut the Magnite and the Kyger, which right now are the two most affordable compact SUVs, I think you will see plenty of the C3s on the road. And then all those bits that we pointed out where costs have been optimized, that will not matter.